Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Boros Singularity. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well. I just want to remind you, tomorrow we are going to be picking our winner for the Battle for Baldur's Gate giveaway. That's a full draft booster box that we're going to be giving away to one lucky subscriber here on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram, or on Discord. We do also have some bonus entry opportunities for those who are monetarily supporting the channel on Patreon and then, of course, YouTube memberships. So just keep that in mind. If you're already subscribed, you're already entered do not worry but i just wanted to give you guys that heads up tomorrow is the day so do look for that video tomorrow but we're talking about boros singularity today guys this is a weird one i'm just gonna fully throw that out there uh this was just a random idea that i had that i thought you know it'd be kind of fun to try it out uh i'm not expecting this to be good and I'm very much expecting me to be missing some very obvious cards in this list. But I threw this together last week uh, and just thought, you know what, let me just give it a shot. I did fine tune just a bit, uh, nothing too crazy, but just tried to kind of see where I could take it. Uh, the idea was very simple. It was to build around Rabble Rousing, uh, which excuse me, creates quite a number of creature tokens is the idea. Uh, even if you're only starting with like one creature, uh, the idea being that you're kind of exponentially growing that every single turn if you can attack in. So, and the creature tokens are relatively expendable, which is kind of nice. Uh, but the idea is to get a bunch of creature tokens with that and then have explosive singularity either as a freebie under the hideaway or uh, having plenty of extra creatures to just basically nerf for 10, <laughs> uh, which is kind of ridiculous. We do also have the Velomachus lore hold here, which obviously doesn't necessarily play the, um, the the explosive singularity but it does work well with things like lore hold command uh big score of course and then some of our early game removal as well so just some interesting stuff here that we're just trying out the idea is that we want our uh, basically a lot of removal in the early game and so we've got play with fire we've got strangle both to deal with you know some of the early game threats we might find cathartic pyre does that same job uh with creatures or planeswalkers but it can also use we can also use it to kind of dig further into the deck and being instant speed along with play with fire is really nice because we don't have to pull that trigger right away uh we do have brutal cathar which is nice because it's yes uh something that can attack in uh but it's also removal on a stick and so basically the idea is to keep the board as clear as possible so we can continuously attack in and get those rabble rousing tokens going fable of the mirror breaker obvious pretty pretty great include here to be honest uh it's really fun with brutal cathar because while it only lasts a turn you can on the uh, reflection of kiki jiki copy the brutal cathar get something out of the way for the attack and then just attack in and yeah they get it back but you basically remove a blocker from combat which is kind of sick um and then lorehold command gives everything indestructible in haste uh so you can get in for a little bit more damage right away or you can draw some cards again those those uh one ones are relatively expendable so you can sacrifice a one one to draw two cards which is pretty good you can also use it just to get three extra damage in gain some life or throw a token down depending on what we need it for of course uh and then we do have an Amiria's call here as a way to again grant indestructible to the majority of our board but then also get some flyers in the mix which will hopefully again just be able to attack in and trigger the rabble rousing to get more and more creature tokens so uh it's a very interesting deck it plays a little bit controlly uh but it's obviously token focused so it's a little bit odd i know uh again i'm not expecting a lot from this let me just go ahead and say this is solely just for fun to try something silly so we're gonna do the best we can guys we're gonna enjoy today hopefully have a relaxed time uh i do hope you guys have been enjoying all the content lately we've been really working hard to continuously build that so i do really hope you've been uh, uh enjoying everything we've been putting out but guys let's jump in let's see what happens today all right guys and here we are for game number one unfortunately this is a pretty bad hand so i'm gonna go ahead and mulligan this uh uh, and yeah, I mean, I'll keep this. This is definitely a lot better. Um, let's throw one of the passes, I think. Um, really doesn't matter too much. Brutal Cathar is not a bad draw, honestly. Uh, we've got the play with fire as well. So if they happen to drop a creature here, we can just go ahead and play with fire it. Uh, which, that's certainly one I'm happy to uh, get rid of here. <clears throat> uh, just to remove that potential option later on so that seems very very good whatever they play here if it is a creature which it 
probably will be. We just Brutal Cathar it. And again, even if they deal with the Brutal Cathar, it's kind of fine. The idea is that we're just trying to stall until we can get to Rabble Rousing or, you know, something else a little bit bigger. Chances are they'll be able to remove the Brutal Cathar, but like, again, we've kept stuff off the field for a couple turns, and that's really all we're trying to do in the early turns of the game, so we'll see. Uh, we do have the lands for both Rabble Rousing and Lorehold Command at this point, so I'm feeling pretty good about the initial kind of mana that we've got going on. Uh, sure. So they are going to get a freebie card off of this, which is very, very good. This is an awesome card. Zeatora's Envoy is ridiculous. Um, and then they're going to draw another card, both of which are very good. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, pretty straightforward. We just attack in. If they do have another Zeatora's uh, Envoy, we're not going to remove it. So, Or we're not going to block it. So not really a huge reason to, uh, to do anything there. That's good. Nice. Yeah, that's very good. Okay, sick. Um, let's do this. All right, so the question becomes, do we just go for the rabble rousing? Uh, which I actually think we do here. Um, yeah, I think we want to start getting that down here. Uh, and we will take, I think a lore hold command. That seems pretty good. This is going to create a 1-1. One -one, so if we need to, we can of course block with the 1-1. One -one. That's perfectly fine. Uh, if they remove it, again, we're not in, like, a life-threatening position yet, which is kind of why I wanted to go with this now. Um, that's very good. Uh, this does get it out of range of the strangle here as well, which is a little frustrating, but uh, we might be able to make something happen. Fable is quite good. Yeah. Uh, curious to see where they put the 1-1. Okay, I assumed there, but you never know. Um, do we take 4? Uh, I'm gonna say no. I'm not positive on that. Um, let's take you. That seems pretty easy to do. Um, we'll go here. Do we just strangle? <laughs> uh, yeah, I kind of think we do. Seems pretty good. Um, and I'll attack in. Now we get two of these, which is very, very good. Uh, and I'm just going to pass, leaving up the Lorehold command here. Again, we're not in a huge rush. We have we do kind of want to get one more land for the Lorehold. One, two, three, four, five, six. But we're actually just getting close to the Rabble Rousing here, like the, the Hideaway trigger. So I'm not really that upset about any of this. This is kind of just fine. Uh, we can kind of not get them here, but we can throw out a uh, creature token to... Uh, theoretically get a little bit more damn or uh, a block in here depending on how they do this so we'll see oh interesting they're gonna throw it here okay yeah that's fine uh yeah so I'll let that hit first I think we'll go ahead and do this now so let's do this and let's sacrifice a permanent We'll sacrifice you, uh, just so we can draw a couple of cards. That's actually really helpful. Let's just go ahead and double block here uh, to get rid of this. Our guys are indestructible, so that was kind of an easy, <laughs> very easy hit. Oh, and that's quite good. Okay, so this allows us to keep throwing creature tokens at them, um, and we're just trying to get them below 10, keep in mind. That's really our main goal. Uh, this is great. We can just get that off the field. <laughs> this is also why it's really nice to have so many like little tiny removal spells is that you're able to continuously just get stuff off of the field. Uh, and now we've got Rabble Rousing number two, and so we can actually just kind of throw out tons of tokens. Lorehold Command here is going to be quite good as well. So as unless they sweep, uh, which would be very annoying. Oh, that's very good. Yes, that is super, super, super good. Uh, so they can just blow the rabble rousing up perfectly reasonable uh, The only upside here is that we've got another one and I think we I mean they they did gain five life. That's quite good Okay They also have the way to copy this which is not great for us um, Okay, so how do we want to do this? Uh, 
five, six, seven, eight. So we can't get them with the cathartic pyre. So let's do this. We're gonna be, we'll see how this goes. Uh, let's, there's the explosive singularity. So we can just win, is that correct? So we do this, wow, we missed. <laughs> and now we just get to explosive singularity for 10. And there we go. That's how you win the game. <laughs> Okay, well, we got a win. I'm pretty amazed by that, guys. That was fantastic. Let's jump into a game too. What's up, guys? Before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you, if you would like to pick up this month's Patreon rewards, feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And, you know, yeah, I'm going to keep this. This is obviously very removal heavy. But again, the nice thing about this deck is we've got ways to draw plenty of extra cards. Uh, and so we can kind of just sit back on this, see what the opponent's trying to do, and hopefully kind of get them here at some point. Um, hmm. Okay. The only thing I would suggest is like rip aparts or something along those lines to deal with like artifacts, enchantments, those kinds of things would be very helpful. That's one area where I feel like I could have potentially just done a little bit better with this deck. So. Uh, definitely an opportunity there to better the deck, hopefully. Okay. So they're gonna hit for one. Uh, I assume they're gonna go ahead and sack this. <coughs> no, they're just going to... Yeah, okay. That's fine. Okay. So then let's see if they actually go for the anvil as well. No. I'm gonna go ahead and force the issue here. Uh, this is going to get, they're going to be forced to do this, and now they've got no tokens, basically, is the idea. Den of the Bugbear, huh? Um, I'm going to go ahead and strangle the Epicure. This may not be correct, um, and I'll just throw this down. It probably is correct to leave up a play with fire here, honestly, um, but... I don't know that much of what they're gonna do is have haste, so I'm kind of okay with this. All right. Um, again, I'm just gonna keep strangling and getting stuff off the field. I'm kind of glad we kept such a removal heavy hand, but I don't know if it's gonna work in our favor or not. <coughs> uh, here, if we'd like, we can Cathartic Pyre plus play with fire, which we can just ditch the land here, most likely, to, to dig further in. Um, it's not anything too crazy, of course, but it's something. They are also stuck on mana, so like, oh, no, never mind. They were stuck on mana, so <laughs> we were kind of getting somewhere there, but okay. So it's going to trigger these guys, which is fine. So now these do not trigger anything. I'm basically just trying to keep them off of like the chaining of all this so they have to do this now but they're not gonna get much out of it um this is so aggressive but let's do it <laughs> this is really not i don't think this is a very good long-term solution we just have so much removal that it's like we might as well uh big score is quite nice so let's do that we've already got one in hand but doubling up is never a bad thing cool um Hmm. I think we wait on the Brutal Cathar. I think I'd like to... We'll, we'll see. We do have the Den of the Bugbear that can attack in here at some point, so that might be worth doing just to start getting some tokens onto the field. Den of the Bugbear in general is quite good with the uh, Rabble Rousing, of course, so it does give us some options here. We'll, we'll see what we need to do. Um, depending on what we draw, we could also just big score again. Uh, to dig further into the deck. It'd be nice to get like a Velimachus, uh, just so we can start kind of doubling up on spells. That allows us to get in for some damage immediately, but then also um, really threaten the life totals. So uh, with with damage spells, of course. I'm going to decline and decline, I think. Uh, while I don't love doing that, I do think that it's just the right play right now. Okay. Uh... All right, so let's guarantee getting one of these off the field. I think that's probably the best bet. 
so they're gonna do the uh this doesn't guarantee it does it they actually still get the uh the thing <laughs> no they don't i'm sorry that's only it's non-tokens i always forget that with uh with this all right sick let's hit uh yeah tapped and attacking so let's get rid of this big guy uh just so one of these is off the field um, and we just get a little 1-1 token behind, so this this continuously threatens. The Brutal Cathar is also quite good against these little tokens. Obviously, they can just sacrifice them, but like it just permanently removes them, which is really good. <clears throat> so they're basically forced into sacking them, so that's fine. Um, definitely need to get rid of Obnixilis. That's not good, but again, we've got the Den of the Bugbear, so I don't really care that much. Uh, here I imagine they do this, yeah. Just so they can create another 1-1. One, one. Uh, again, gonna decline. I mean, I think the play is pretty clear here. We just have to do this. Um, I'm assuming they block here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna hold on to the Sundown Pass as a discard for here. All right, so with the Loth, I'm pretty sure they are just going to be able to take us down here. Um, but that's kind of, oh. Oh, if only, if only. Um, dang, I really wish we could we could get this down. I should have played the land and discarded the big score. That was a bit of a mistake. Uh, yeah, I think we just have to wait. Um, this is quite bad for us. They definitely can just, like, kill us. Probably this turn. Um, deal one, deal two, deal three, four, five, six. Yeah, they can definitely kill us. Um, so if we do this, we discard the big score. Whoops. Resolve. We do that. Um... I don't think this is a good idea, <laughs> but we're gonna take it. Um, yeah. Ooh, they don't like this. Um, they also just have the Field of Ruin, though, so, like, activating the Den of the Bugbear isn't super helpful right now. Give me a land. That's not a land. Um, alright, I'm gonna go ahead and concede here, guys. They definitely have us. Really unfortunate. I wish we could have swung that one, but, you know, that was a rough, a rough one. That's okay. Let's jump into a game three. All right, guys, here we are for our third game, probably going to be our last game. And yeah, I mean, we can keep this. It's a little sketchy, but again, with the Cathartic Pyre, there's so much card selection and like looting in this deck that I don't actually think it's that big of a problem. We also, if we get one more land, we have Fable of the Mirror Breaker uh, and we can just discard a lore hold here. We've got, you know, a couple of them, obviously. So I don't think that's too much of a problem. Uh, I'm assuming like a reanimator deck with otherworldly gaze wouldn't be terribly surprised. We'll see. Um, this could be a very difficult matchup. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Sick. <laughs> All right. Well, this might be terrible. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's see what happens. Uh, don't love this. Really don't love this. Um, play with fire is probably going to be... Like, all of the burn is probably going to be quite bad, so I'm going to go ahead and just hit him for two, just so we can get a scry. I think we throw that on the bottom. Um, let's get Fable down. Uh, this is quite a good hit, or a, a good turn three play, because if it does land and stick past this turn, we can actually start generating some treasure tokens, which is obviously quite helpful for us. That's the reanimator spell, so we know that's probably going to be coming down. Uh, I think we'll ditch both of these, as much as I love both of them. Um, Brutal Cathar is quite helpful. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. It's going to create our treasure token, which is good. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and rabble rousing here. Um, and there's the singularity. That could be interesting. Um, 
All right, so if they just go for Jenga Taxis here, we do have the Brutal Cathar, which can come down and actually deal with it. Uh, and they don't have a follow-up play, which is pretty important to note here. Um, so, I mean, the play is pretty clear for us. Attack in. We get our treasure token plus a 1-1. One, one. Uh, and I think we just pass. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, do they have another target? They don't. So they may have to spend this turn discarding before they can actually do anything, which is actually pretty relevant because, I mean, <laughs> we're not far off. You know what I mean? Okay, they do have a Dusk Mangler. Uh, but again, only three mana, so I don't think they can reanimate this turn. Oh, are they going to deal with the Brutal Cathar? Uh, yeah, they definitely are. Okay. Uh, that's very unfortunate. Okay. Um, hmm. Trying to think what we could do here. So we can copy this. What all does this counter? Artifact, instant, or sorcery, huh? So I'm gonna throw this down. Copy this. I am gonna attack with all. Um, they're obviously just gonna block the 2-2 if I had to guess. Here's the thing though, we're going real, why there? I was gonna say, that makes no sense. <laughs> um. We are going pretty wide here, uh, which is relevant. <clears throat> okay. I don't know, guys. Maybe? Here's the thing. We're getting to the point where the mana on the lore hold is actually pretty useful as well. Okay, so the Dusk Mangler is going to come in and just value discards card and loses for life. Okay. Um, yeah. So that resolves. We get rid of you. We'll get rid of big score. It's a little too expensive for us to really play, especially in the face of a Jenga Taxis. All right. Uh, yeah, I think I do just get rid of these two. They're not very relevant right now. Ooh, oh, that's quite good. Okay, uh, let's just, do some math here so we can get rid of Jenga Taxis if we'd like uh, or we can lore hold which they cannot block now whatever we hit with lore hold is definitely gonna get countered uh, which is pretty relevant but I think this so let's see one two three four five whoa, whoa, wait. we want to do this we want to do this. <coughs> we want to attack. We want to submit zero, and we want to hit him. So now we just win, right? Did we do it? Did we beat Reanimator? Yes! Oh my goodness, what a game. That I was so close to missing lethal. Oh, I'm so glad we did that. Yes. All right, sick. Let's talk about this deck. All right, so a little surprising. Uh, we actually got two wins. That's two more than I thought we would get. Again, guys, I want to reiterate, this deck is not meant to be competitive. This deck is meant to just be kind of a fun little little silly idea that I was just playing around with, and it kind of worked. Um, now, again, I don't think this is going to ever be good enough to deal with like a true standard tournament. It's definitely not good for traditional standard. I think it's way too easy to disrupt. I also think the deck itself needs tooling. I think Rip Apart is a great option. I mentioned that, and I think game two, uh, just to be able to deal with, you know, some different pieces that you might come across. Uh, now, if you do take this into traditional, obviously you can sideboard a lot of things, but in general, I mean, it's a fun deck, guys. I'm not going to lie. It was pretty fun. Um, 
I don't think it's, excuse me for the burp, I don't think it's like super good, but it's really, really fun to play. And I do think it's actually quite good uh, against, you know, some of the decks that you see in the meta. I don't think it's great against all of them, but all of that to say, it was a blast. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was really fun to try something completely different here. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, stay tuned for tomorrow's announcement for the giveaway winner. I know this is a short giveaway, but I'm really stoked for it. Uh, we also might have some other news in that video video we'll talk about that in the video though um, I'm not positive yet because I'm recording this earlier in the week so definitely want to check that video out tomorrow but guys thank you so much I love you all very much I'll see you later